Hi everyone and welcome back once again to Thursdev. I'm your host Luke and this is the first episode in a series talking about analytics concepts in game design. If you're a regular here, you'll know that I talk a lot about analytics in this series and you should be at least reasonably familiar with the concepts thereof, but I have yet to go into detail about how we use these metrics as a point of reference in our designs and identify and address issues therein when designing our game mechanics. I'm going to start out right here with a bit of a disclaimer. If you're only interested in creating a pure piece of entertainment, if you're creating art for art's sake and not designing something to sell, then this video and the next few might not be what you're looking for. We'll be looking at game design from an analytical standpoint, considering how to plan and make a commercially viable product. Some will believe this has no place in dictating design, and I respect that standpoint. But like it or not, in order to profit from a project, sometimes it's valuable to think not only of pure entertainment value, your audience be damned, but how your game's mechanics affect player behavior and interaction with your game as a product. This does have the effect of possibly diluting your designs for the sake of pragmatism, but applied correctly, metrics aware design can work towards and in concert with your designs, while also offering a performance focus that could greatly benefit your game in the long run. Before we can really dive into the metrics aware design, however, we really need to understand metrics and how they're measured. In this day and age of network-enabled games, video game developers have even greater tools in their hands now than ever before to learn about their players' behavior, and react to and improve their game experiences in response to their players' needs. Just a generation of games ago, response time was poor and the data that we could gather about play habits was very limited. We relied on player reported issues to inform our decisions on how to patch or expand our games, and things like how long a player was continuing to play a game, or whether players were engaging with certain mechanics or not, were basically a black box to us. Moving into the downloadable era where games are made on devices that are perpetually connected to the internet and capable of transmitting metrics data back to the publisher, we've learned so much more about play patterns and can create analytics hooks in our code so granular that we know which individual step of a tutorial the player quit the game playing, or when they're getting stuck. With updating, soft launching, and patching a very real part of game development, we have the tools in our hands to allow us to be reactive with this data but we should always be mindful of our metrics, and beyond just designing a game's mechanics solely for the sake of play when considering a commercial product, it behooves us to keep metrics in mind that we'll be planning on measuring. Proactively designing with these data points in mind is valuable in creating a commercially successful product. Though this information is most relevant to the free-to-play space, any given game project that has the capacity to gather and report metrics is worth gathering and reporting on. No matter what your end goal in the release of an individual project, Knowledge is most certainly power, and analytics are knowledge about your players distilled to their most basic numeric forms. And not unlike your pillars of design, having well-defined metrics goals will also help you to evaluate the value of your planned mechanics when you have limited time and scope to implement. And post-release, when you get to analyze the data that you've collected, it will also help to inform you as to what your players are really enjoying in your game, which should help you to create even better content going into the future. So what sort of data should you be collecting on your players' play behaviors? And what are the key metrics for product success? There are a plethora of different things that are commonly tracked, and you'll find as you delve deeper into analytics that there are a number of different schools of thought on not just the best way to measure certain metrics, but the very definition of some of those metrics. Without an idea of what's tied to this data, and thought given to what each part of your game contributes to, it's difficult to make an informed decision about how to plan and ultimately react to the data that you're gathering. This series is hopefully going to be your primer on the most common types of analytics data that you as a game developer should be aware of. How to go about gathering the data, and once you have that data, how to read it, what it means, some industry standard benchmarks that you can compare your own numbers against so that you're aware of what current trends are, and how well your own product is doing. As of course, you won't know if you really have a problem until you know what the bar for the problem is, and finally, what to do about it if you do run into issues. I touched on a number of these concepts back in February with our video on the games as a service model when referring to KPIs, so you may already have a passing familiarity with some of them, but that video only scratched the surface of these data points, and I feel that it's worth revisiting analytics with an eye turned to identifying and resolving issues. So the mission statement of this series is thus. We'll first look at the definitions of a few key metrics, how they're measured, and once we understand them from an analytical point of view, we'll step into how they can inform your design. 
In broad strokes, we'll be looking at two major categories. Retention, data that determines how well your game is capturing players, and conversion, metrics to determine how many players are monetizing in your game and on what. Through the lens of these two metrics, we'll explore the way that your players interact with your game and hopefully gain a greater understanding of our design's strong and weak points, and understand how we can improve our games as relates to those two categories. First up next week, we'll begin with retention, understanding the reasons that we follow retention, reasons for churn, and the difference between the many different forms of retention. So stay tuned right here and join me next week as we dive into this series on metrics-aware game design. I hope that I'll see you there. If you'd like to be informed the moment that one of our videos go live, please consider subscribing to our channel. Or if you prefer to keep it serious and focus only on Thursdev, perhaps our Serious Sunday series, we have playlists that you can also follow that will also let you know when they are updated. Regardless, I do hope that you'll join me as we plumb the depths of analytics and the designs that love them. Until then though, thank you for watching, and take care.